Hey Cactus Friends, it's Jenny from Cookies Cacti. It is time for the 25 and a half week update on this cactus seed soil battle. For those of you who are new to the series, I do recommend that you watch episode one of this seed soil battle where I go over all the different types of soils and the cost um, for this experiment of growing astrophytum and areocarpus from seed. For those of you who are familiar with the series, you'll see that some things have moved around. There are some seedlings here that are clearly not areocarpus nor uh, astrophytum <laughs> because, you know, I had all these gaps of where I moved the areocarpus into the tray over here. So to make, you know, the most out of some space, I moved some other seedling pots here. So just a really quick recap, this was an experiment to compare six different soils for growing astrophytum and areocarpus from seed. So uh, going from here, it's these center six columns of pots and uh, ignore the, you know, the ones that are not part of this experiment. So we have Unigro straight out of the bag, Rob Romero's mix using my native soil, which is clay. Then we've got Miracle Grow Seed Starter with Miracle Grow Perlite. Then we have Miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm Mix straight out of the bag. Then we have our two premium soils that I purchased from Etsy. One is from East Coast Kamanchaka, and the other one is from Mike's Rare Plants, his Lofo Pro Seed Starter. So those are the six soils that we compared. So now this first tray only has astrophytum in it, and then we'll go look at the aerial carpus in a little bit. So at 25 and a half weeks old, I mean, we're pretty much at about six months. And you can kind of see overall how the seedlings are doing. And uh, we'll take a look at them closer. There was a comment left for me asking, you know, at this point, Jenny, do you have any soils that you prefer? And kind of. <laughs> I feel like this experiment has just ended up at creating more questions than answers. So what can I say for sure? Well, I can say that the premium soils did quite well. The only issue with the premium soils is that they're quite expensive. And for somebody like me who's constantly growing cactus from seed, this is just not affordable for growing large amounts of seeds. However, I could see perhaps using these premium soils, for example, if I was growing some seeds that are really expensive or very rare to find, and I want the best chance possible of growing those seeds, then I probably would consider buying, you know, using a premium soil for that. But for my astrophytum with seeds that I got from my own plant and aerial carpus that I got seeds from my own plant, I'm probably not going to go with this. It's just cost prohibitive. But they did do well. Um, I can say East Coast Kamenchaka had the best germination rate for both astrophytum and the aerial carpus. And the interesting thing is that you can kind of see when you compare East Coast Kamenchaka to Mike's Rare Plants. Mike's Rare Plant at some point started to kind of outgrow the pace of East Coast Kamenchaka. The numbers on Mike's Rare Plants is lower, like not as many plants came up, but you can see that they're larger than East Coast Kamenchaka, which is kind of interesting. The other conclusion I can make with fairly good certainty is that you do not want to use the miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm Mix straight out of the bag to grow cactus from seed. Um, it did the worst out of all six uh, different types of soils. But, you know, we also have tray number two that we'll look at in a moment, which I amended the miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm Mix with some inorganics, and it did a lot better. So I'm not saying that the miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm Mix is an absolute no. It's just a no straight out of the bag. You want to amend it. Uh, then when it comes to these rest of these, I would say for Rob Romero's mix, definitely confirmed you probably don't want to use native soil that's clay-based. I mean, the germination was quite good. You can see the numbers here. Pretty good. But you can also see that now at almost six months in, the seedlings are considerably smaller than um, the seedlings in the other soils. I would say that the miracle Grow uh, seed starter and perlite didn't do too bad. I think the germination wasn't it was near the bottom, but the surviving seedlings progress is not bad. And then we've got Unigrow. 
I would say in terms of performance and cost, Unigrow might be my choice. And um, there's others, like a bunch of other trays that I've started that I'm using now Unigrow rather than the miracle Grow seed starter with miracle Grow Perlite. I'm just, I'm just trying it. We'll see how it does because I only did two genus of plants here. There's a, you know, so many other genus that I don't know if, like how well-rounded these soils are for all cactus genus. I don't know. So I've got other trays now using Unigrow as my organic matter uh, in growing other um, genus of plants like Copiapola, for example. So I would say, for me, Unigrow seems to be pretty well-rounded. The miracle Grow seed starter and perlite seems to be good for, I guess it's not too terrible. Yeah, so you can see I'm having a hard time making a conclusion. So it's probably one of the most inconclusive uh, experiments you could find. <laughs> um, the other thing is some folks were asking me, you know, now I don't have a dome on, the, on this tray. And some folks were asking, you know, how are you watering this? And I don't have a good answer for that. I often forget that these trays are even here. So when I remember, I'll come by and kind of pick up the pots and see how light they are. I actually just watered these, I think, yesterday. And there was another person who left a comment with, that I think is absolutely true, is that in reality, each of these soils actually need different types of care because different, you know, the different soils hold different amounts of water, and et cetera, et cetera. But for me, I'm treating them all exactly the same. So, you know, what ends up happening is that I will find the soil that kind of does the best with the kind of care that I can give it. There's no way that I can do different care for six different soils. That's just not possible. So that's another comment that I will make. Um, but, you know, instead of going through these soil by soil, you're kind of seeing the progress of the seedlings. Uh, as I'm just talking about it in general here. So I'm thinking I'll just continue doing updates on these seedlings until they outgrow their pots, because once it's time to repot, I don't have any more of these soils, you know, to continue um, tracking them after they get repotted. I'm going to have to end up potting them into whatever I have. So we'll just keep going until they run out of space. Like this starting to get crowded, but there's still, there's still room to grow. Yeah, so that's how it's looking. I'd say my expert plant is doing quite well in terms of seedling size. East Coast Common Chuck is still has really good numbers. There has been a little bit of die off. I don't know if you can see that dead seedling right in the middle of the pot. Um, but then Unigrow is not bad. So next let's talk about the aerial carpus. So the aerial carpus, I moved into a tray over here, and you can see it's still covered, although the, uh, this little dial thing is open. And I am keeping this shade cloth over the dome. So giving the aerial carpus some more time to be covered in a high humidity environment with some more protection from light. Let me open this and then let's take a look at them. All right, so these six pots in the center are part of the experiment, and then these other ones are not. I think everything in here is aerocarpus. Um, let's start over here. This is Unigrow. You're going to see those little bugs that are in the pot, which I think folks were identifying as springtail. I just left them in there. Can you see them crawling around? You can probably see it. So the aerocarpus and the Unigrow seem to be doing pretty well, pretty good numbers. And seedling progress is not bad. Then we've got the Rob Romero mix, which again, remember, it has my native clay soil. And there's still seedlings in there. It's a good number of seedlings, but they're clearly smaller, less developed than, let's say, the seedlings in the Unigrow. Next, we have the miracle Grow seed starter with miracle Grow perlite. Not bad. Not bad. Then we've got miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm Mix straight out of the bag. Not great at all. Uh, let's see if we can even find... I know there's a couple seedlings in here, but I don't think I can even see them here. Well, they're probably buried in there. I had just watered this yesterday, so it kind of redistributed the top dressing. I think there's a couple seedlings left in there. We just can't see them. 
Next are the two premium soils. So we've got the East Coast Cum and Chaka soil. The germination did really well and the seedlings came up the fastest in this mix. And they look like they're doing pretty well. But if you compare it to the Unigrow, I don't know if there's a, that big of a difference. I don't know. And this is, Unigrow is considerably more affordable. And last but not least, we have the Lofo Pro Seed Starter from Mike's Rare Plants. And I know there's all this green algae, so the plants are like camouflaged, but you can see them. The remaining plants look okay. There's some like white stuff on there, which I don't know what that is. Um, but the numbers are not as good as East Coast Common Chocolate and perhaps not as good as the even the miracle Grow Seed Starter and the Unigrow. And these are some of my dummy pots of Aerocarpus. This Fissuratus. Um, the only thing I can say is that by keeping them covered longer like this with some protection from light, this is probably the best aerial carpus growing that I have ever done. But I don't hold my breath on aerial carpus because they like to just kind of get up and die at any moment. I've had them till like a year and then they just have massive die-offs. So I'm not holding my breath, but so far this is probably the best seedlings I have ever gotten on aerial carpus. And I think it perhaps just from that little bit of extra um, care or protection uh, this early in their lives. So I'll continue keeping them here. Next, let's take a look at the tray number two of experiments. So tray number two, you can see I still have the shade cloth covering the dome, but we're at 16 weeks on tray number two. And you can see I've already opened up these, what are they, dials? And then I'm already kind of lifting the, the dome off of the tray. So it's drying out inside. Let me take this off. So this is the first time that I have ever opened up the dome for an update video for this tray. You know, they're already uh, approaching four weeks old. And then what I'm going to do is just like tray number one, I'm going to separate out the aerial carpus and put them up into that, you know, that tray that's up there. And uh, just do the same thing because they seem to like that. So this tray, we also have six different types of soils that we're comparing, and it's these six rows in the, or columns in the middle of the tray, and they've got some dummy, dummy pots here and dummy pots on the edges. This is another one in which I'm having a really hard time drawing any kind of conclusions. So let me go over the six soils. So, you know, from the tray number one, we saw the miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm mix it really poorly straight out of the bag. So we did some experiments by mixing uh, that miracle Grow mix with a bonsai mix. And we also uh, tried Rob Romero's mix, but instead of using my native clay soil, uh, using these potting soils instead to see if they would do a little bit better. But what I'm noticing is that there's kind of wide variation in how the seedlings are doing, even amongst the same soil. And I don't really quite understand it, which is why I can't really make a conclusion um, from this experiment. The only thing I can say for sure is that the miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm Mix does way better when you amend it with some inorganics. So let's start over here. We've got the miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm Mix mixed with a Japanese bonsai mix, which is pumice, lava rock, and akadama. And we've got the astrophytum, uh, aerial carpus you can barely even see. I don't think the aerial carpus did that well in this experiment and I don't know why. There's still seedlings here but I almost feel like the they did better with tray number one. But here's more astrophytum. That astrophytum is looking pretty good. Again these are 16 weeks old. Next we have the Rob Romero's mix but using miracle Grow Cactus Citrus Palm mix as the native soil. And you can see the progress of the seedlings really hard to see the aerial carpus. Then you can see this pot, they're just so underdeveloped and I don't, I don't get it. Maybe the light intensity? And here's that pot in the back. Then we have Unigrow with the Japanese bonsai mix. You can see, the seedlings look pretty happy. There's not a lot of them in here, but the ones that are look pretty happy. 
Oh, there's some really stressed areocarpus in here. But then you see, we see this, right? Then we move over to this pot and look at those seedlings. I don't get it. It's gotta be like maybe the light intensity because it's more in the, you know, in the center of the tree where these are at the edge. I don't know. That one also, you know, smaller seedlings compared to, let's say, this row. So that's why I can't really make a conclusion. They vary. Uh, next is Rob Ramirez mixed by using Unigro as the native soil. Carpus, really hard to see. Again, another pot of really kind of small astrophytum. Same thing there in the back as well. Next we have something a little different. I used that Japanese bonsai mix, but I used worm castings as the uh, native soil or the organic matter. And you can see those astrophytum look pretty happy. There, there were 25 seeds sowed per pot. There's some really dark colored areocarpus. But you see, okay, so this pot looks great, and then we move to this pot, and you can practically see almost no plants in there. Why such a huge variation between this pot and that one, you know, given it's the same mix? Same thing in the back. Really, really small, underdeveloped seedlings compared to a pot like this. Last but not least, I use my adult soil, which is... 75% pumice with 25% uh, unigro. There's some seedlings. You don't look that happy. Aerocarpus. More astrophytum. Numbers are not bad. And then last but not least, more astrophytum. So I really don't know what to say about this tray. <laughs> Sorry. This experiment is very not conclusive. Well, we can make some statements for sure, but uh, otherwise, kind of hard. My gosh, she actually came in from the garage. Somebody continues to sleep in the car all day. Cookie. So I don't know how helpful this is. Uh, for those of you who are interested, hopefully you're still enjoying these updates. I'll just keep going. Try to come in about once every four weeks or so and give you an update to see how these guys are doing. But that's where we're at, at 25 and a half weeks for these guys, tray number one. And at 16 weeks for this guy, or tray number two. And then those areocarpus, which I've already <laughs> recovered again. All right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye.